Now, you can try to improve yourself all you want, but whenever you're confronted with powerful stimuli, your habitual responses to stimuli will in li- all likelihood take over and your social position will remain unchanged. Like, all of my life since I've been reading books about, you know, age eight or nine, I've like been into about self-help. What? Since about eight or nine, I've been reading a lot of books. Oh, eight or nine, eight or nine years old? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And so I'm always reading books and I'm always trying to improve myself and I'm always trying to change my position in society, you know, upward. I always want to orient upward to the more prestigious and high status segment of society. And it's done no good. Like, because people can still, like, see me and they can talk to me. They immediately know that I belong with either the least popular of the popular crowd or the most popular of the unpopular crowd. So no matter how many books on self-improvement I read and try to practice, you know, I can convert to Orthodox Judaism, I can be Hustler Magazine's asshole of the month for the December issue 1999, I can be on 60 Minutes, I can bang 44 women. In 44 years. In 44 different ways, I can go out with porn stars, I can be on the cover of LA Weekly. It doesn't change my social status, my social position, like people can still you know, get where I'm at because I still have these habitual responses to stimuli. People can just like tell. Like what you know, I can move. That's what I moved a lot as a kid. My family moved and I was always shocked that we'd move somewhere and then they'd this was before the internet and people would immediately pick up that I was a loser. Or maybe not immediately. I had like a few weeks, you know, where I was like this popular guy because I had an accent, you know, I was just new to the States, like the first few weeks of school I was like, you know, kind of a curiosity and you know, I had a chance with this really hot chick in sixth grade. And, but then, within a few weeks, people quickly figured out I was a loser. Then when I went back to Australia a few years later, after high school, I now had a bit of an American accent, and I'd been in America for seven years. And I thought, oh, maybe, you know, I'll have something special. They still figured out right quick that I was a loser. And then I, like, I moved from Northern California to Southern California to go to UCLA, and I thought, oh, you know, I'm in a new town in a new position, maybe they won't figure out I'm a loser. And they still figured it out. And I converted to Judaism, they still figured it out. I like lashed on to Dennis Prager into his crowd and I thought, oh, maybe they won't figure out I'm a loser because I'm a Dennis Prager devotee and you know I love Dennis and and maybe they won't figure out I'm a loser. But they still quickly figured out I was a loser. And I thought, oh I'll go to Young Israel Century City. You know, I'll go to Duff Yomi every day. I'll go to Duff Yomi. I made like one friend there and I thought Oh, you know, who was prestigious, and I thought, wow, you know, I'm friends with someone who's prestigious, and I'm going to duff Yomi every day, and I'm not saying anything stupid. Maybe they won't figure out I'm a loser, but they quickly figured out I was a loser. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll go to Bet Jacob. Maybe they won't figure out I'm a loser. Went to Bet Jacob, they figured out I was a loser within like three or four months, kicked me out. Okay, I'll go to Chabad based Mazalel. Maybe they won't figure out I'm a loser. Because they never kick anybody right. out of Chabad. Right, so I was there for maybe two or three months, and boom, they kicked me out. They figured out I was a loser. thought, okay, I'll go to B'nai David. B'nai David, open door policy. Maybe they won't figure out I was a loser. And, like, they gave me every opportunity to, like, be a decent person. But eventually, like, I got kicked out of there. And so, like, wherever I've gone, people have always figured out who I am. Like, I could move, like, to Kazakhstan. Like, my sister could be, like, the number three hawker in all of Kazakhstan. Why just use that joke for the 80 billion time? And people would still figure out I'm a loser. Like, I could be on Good Morning America, you know, next week, and people still figure you, out... There's something to what you said, and I'll tell you what. Yeah. When we walk together on Shabbos, mm-hmm. okay... And when I normally walk, uh, I, when I normally walk around in the, in the area, mm-hmm. you know, people don't pay any attention to me at all, right? Mm-hmm. They just, you know, they go hi, hey, good job, or whatever. And like during the week, they'll go hello, hey, hey. I got a lot of stares when I was walking with you. You know, more than I ever get. I got a stare down many places, and I. It wasn't like a happy stare down where they're like, yeah. hey guys, yeah. how it's good to see you both yeah. or something. Yeah. Hey, who? Yeah. it was like. Why are you with that loser? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I go around on Shabbos and I say good Shabbos to people, and they won't say anything back. <laughs> you know how like disheartening that is. Like, it's like I'll say good Shabbos, they won't smile, they won't say anything. They'll just. But where do they know you from? They just know I'm a loser, and like what's worse is I know I'm a loser. So no matter where I go and no matter what I do, I know I'm a loser. Like I can like pretend, I can like psych myself up. 
I can say the right words, I can wear the right clothes, I can even, like, I can have a beautiful date, I can, you know, be on the cover of a magazine or a newspaper, I can be on TV. But wherever I go, I still know I'm a loser. And that, like, it shows. Like, I give off this vibe that says, I'm a loser. Like, no matter where I go, like, you know, all these different social situations, I'm sitting there isolated, and, like, my face just across my forehead, it just reads, I'm a loser. I remember I was at uh, Limud, L.A., and I met these women. You know, and we were hanging out, and, uh, you know, they, they found me entertaining and all that. And then she said, later she said, there was just this time where I just felt so sorry for you. You know, she just met me. And, like, but she saw me interacting or trying to interact with the crowd, and she just, like, felt so sorry for me. Like, I, I struck her as that pathetic. <laughs> that is some seriously negative self-talk. <laughs> but do you have a sense when people can, like, pick up on what you're thinking? Look, so Talmud123 says you're a winner in his eyes as long as you remain Shomer Brit. 